right, we're still on to Festus Aleke, a crime reporter and uh, a journalist, of course, a professional journalist and the chairman of Nigerian Union of Journalists at Doe State uh, Council. Thank you so much for coming on BAT. Thank you. Okay, now let's get back to you now. We've spoken about you being a journalist. Now, what made you decide to say you want to uh, take up the well business of welfare? for the journalist as the chairman of the council. All right, thank you. You know, when you are running an election, mm. before you decide to go for any contest, you must have a conviction and you must have a core mission. Vision is what you have in mind to do. And the mission is the process that will drive that vision to come. So I was able to look at the vision and then I also look at the mission the process and where I'm going to. I discovered that journalists today, they need welfare. Mm -hmm. Journalists today, they need to support. They report and report and report. You see some of them, so many things happening. We have lost a lot of journalists in the line of duty. Some have dropped dead suddenly without any um, uh, notice or whatever. You just see that somebody you met today, tomorrow is no more. So I discovered all this, then I sat on my own. How best can we intervene? So I told them, I want to contest. And then by the grace of God, they have the confidence that I'll be able to push. They voted for me. Uh, it's just about a month now that I won as the chairman of the Nigeria Union Journal Edo State Council. The first thing we did in the union was to install internet facilities. Right now, you have first floor, second floor internet in the press center of the NUK. Journalists can come there now. They can even, even if they don't have data in their original phone, they can get onto the Wi-Fi of the press center and browse free. And did that job? Yes. And then I discovered that some of them too. I said the era of journalists looking out to brand envelope. Let us see how we can checkmate it. And the best way is to engage journalists in meaningful businesses. Yes. So in Edo and UJ, we have made an arrangement with a consultant who is into cooperative societies. The person came to the press center. He has, uh, they have already engaged in training. They have also explained to us the processes and then how to get journalists to become a cooperator. Mm -hmm. And the essence of this is to have Edo and UJ cooperative society. And from there, we can raise loans from some of these institutions. And what would the law be made for? Who says journalists who cannot do private business? Who say? Does it mean that because you are reporting for radio, because you are reporting for television or newspaper, you too can also do some private business that will bring money? So we have the opinion that let journalists look inwards, aside, think outside the box. Think outside coming on television to talk to the world. And then you go home looking for transport to go home. No, we said, no, this can't happen. So we have already made contacts with Industrial Development Bank, Icora Development Bank, even to Central Bank to see, because we write the stories for them. Mm. There are occasions they will say, Central Bank of Nigeria, they're giving some loans to people. You see journalists writing the reports, but they are not getting. But why can't we also benefit? Are we not Nigerians? Mm -hmm. But the best way you can benefit from such soft loan is for you to put yourself together. And you need a leader to organize that. And that is why I am the leader. And that is why we're already arranging this as we speak now to see how we can get journalists to get involved into one business or the other so that when they are off air, at least they can have something to fall back on. Then outside that, on our own, we discovered that some journalists too also need support. And what are these support? Are you aware that press secretaries today, media aides today, some of them are not even journalists? Yes. Some of them are not, don't even know anything media. So when you engage a press secretary who is a proper politician, then they will not go and look for journalists to, who will now serve as their aide, doing the work of a real chief press secretary, and they're giving them opinion. We are saying no. So we want to send proposal to the relevant authorities to see that if you must engage people as your chief press secretary, as your media is, why not engage a professional journalist? 
And when you engage a professional journalist, of course, you are going to enjoy the services of a real, true journalism life. Mm -hmm. you, are going to, you are going to enjoy the services of what a real journalist should be. Instead of looking for second hand and thereafter looking to, this is welfare. So when you engage a journalist who will be well robust in the place of work and of course, these are all the things we, the union, should be able to do. So outside that, there are many others we already planned mm. that we want to do for journalists in every state. Okay, the issue of uh, quackery is a major challenge. Yes. And I'm aware that you also have plans for that. How do you intend it's, to do It's very that? simple, very simple. We have a constitution of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. And that constitution defines who a journalist is. Holding a pen and a jota and a camera does not make you a journalist. That you work in a media house, whether in a television house or a radio house or in a newspaper house, that you work there as a staff does not make you a journalist. So what makes you a journalist is for you to have the requisite qualification one, you must be a mass communicator. Two, you must have a certificate in journalism or media arts. At least you must have gone through these processes. Even the Nigeria Union of Journalism, they made it easier now. There's an institution, International Institute of Journalism, for people to upgrade. They have diploma, they have postgraduate diploma, and then they even have HND for journalists who want to upgrade. So which means if you have O level, you don't have at all, that means you can do your ND in International Institute of Journalism, IIG. Then if you have a, a diploma in another, you can do HND. If you have a BA, you can do a, a postgraduate diploma. So this is a, I did postgraduate diploma, and uh, today some of us can be, we are qualified journalists. So if you don't have any certificate at all, if you don't have any journalist certificate at all, but you work in the media house, you cannot be seen to be a journalist. So, how do we tend to do this? We have 13 chapters in the Edo State, okay. made up of NUG. Now, we'll write to them. There's going to be a committee that will, that will be set up, credentials committee. We'll write to them. Please bring all the journalists you think you have in your various institutions. They'll bring them to us. The next we request is, let us have your certificates. So you must be able to come at least a diploma in journalism or a diploma in mass communication or a diploma in media arts. So when you have to look at it, then number two, you must have a place you work. And that's why we call it practicing journalism. You don't just have your certificate, you go and put it in your bedroom and then you say, no, you must be practicing as well. You must have a media house where you practice. Yeah. So when we have all this, we will not come up with what we call compendium. For instance, um, if I work in EBS, I can say, okay, EBS chapter, how many journalists do you have here? Then we can create a page for them in the compendium, from one to the end. Their name, their qualification, their name, their qualification. So that will be under a dog broadcasting service chapter. Then the next, NTA, where are your names? Then we look at, so when we do this, we now know those who are actually practicing journalism in Edo State. So when an election comes, we don't need to go and inflate our, our, our chapter list. When an election comes, we will already know, we already know ourselves. We don't need to go and bring driver, bring mechanics, bring cleaner, and put them into a paper to say they are not journalists. No, that must end. Okay, well, let's come back to you now as a crime reporter because I know that despite the fact that you're um, the chairman of the NUG, you're still actively, you know, practicing. And that's what it means to be a practicing journalist. Why did you choose to have a niche for yourself in crime reportage? You know, I was doing general beat report before. At the point, I was posted to government house as government house correspondent in 2007 under uh, the deputy governor then. Mm. But I was very brief. I discovered that even while I was there, I would hear that something has happened at the Benin Bypass. I would move. Why would I go there? Because I want to get the story. Some people will call, oh, one person has been killed 
Ah, to bow. I will move. So that's like, ah, you are leaving this. Uh, and then, okay. Yes. Me. Do you know that? Because if somebody has been killed at all, or there's an attempt to kill somebody, it's news. If a house has been invaded at all, whether it's burned down or so, it's news. Therefore, I will leave normal government beats and go and do the story. Be like, okay, it's like you now specialize in this area. So please leave all this beat. Go and be breaking us. Then I started breaking the stories. Okay. Other television stations were not calling me. We heard that you he went to Obo to the police airport with the story. We heard that you he went to the bypass to the police airport with the story. Before you knew it, it grows. And now, as I was contesting for this position of NG, people started asking, are you sure you are going to be reported? I said, why would I not report? Before I came in here now, as early as 7.30 a.m. today, I got a call. Even as a sitting chairman of the union, NUG, I got a call that uh, a woman was murdered somewhere around the uh, Abuja um, sawmill at Tubo. Today, I moved from my bed. I quickly got my dress ready. I got the camera. I moved. I covered the story. But when I got there, I met the woman there. That's uh, midnight. Some people went to the house, dragged her out, and then got her mutilated. But when I did myself, I saw that it has uh, a kind of suspected ritual murder. Mm. Because they removed the private part and some part of the body. I, call, I was the one that even called the police. Because the first thing the people did was to call me. Instead of calling the police. Yes. So when I say, well, I don't know, they will not want police, well, I will be called police, they will arrest us. But for them, they were confident yeah. that if they confess, then they will be safe. So when they called me and I got to the scene, I brought out my phone, I called the police control room. In less than five minutes, the police came. It was even my president that the police carried the woman. That to the motor, that's confidence. So whether I'm chairman of NG or not, I will still report. I will still cover my crime beats. And I will still do my program crime watch on the television. I will do my program crime um, reports too on radio. It's not really disturbed. <laughs> okay, well, um, now looking at you know, some of these uh, issues, the challenges we face as journalists, because now you said you had to leave a lucrative bit in quotes, like yeah. some people want to put it, and then you had to use most of it was your funds. You know, you had to use because you had a passion. Can can this actually? Does this still happen? Does this still exist? Does uh, do we have passionate reporters who want to go out there and do their job? Could that just be the reason why we have a lot of uh, uh, reports that are half-baked and you know does not really seem to uh, project the actual report? Whether I would like it or not, in every profession all over the world, you have people with strong passion. Any profession you find. There are occasions you go to some hospitals, some doctors will say, I've closed. Mm. They want to go. But a doctor will say, do I have closed. Please come. I'm sure you must have seen that before. Yes. You find it everywhere. Hi, ah, hello, madam. Oh, please. Because they have strong passion for it. So we just walk by, even if they are bringing the president, they will walk away. But some will say no, some nurses will even be shouting. There are occasions you go to some hospitals, you see some nurses shouting. Some say no, 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 no. It's passion. You also find it even in engineering. You find it in all professions. You also find it even in driving. You see some driver, they'll be on the stage, they'll be quarreling. Some will be calm because they have strong passion. We also have it too in the journalism world. Some will tell you in the studio, I'm not on duty. You call them, there's fire incident at Bobahil. They say, no, I'm not on duty. Please call the other person on duty. And you call the person on duty, the line will not go. And before you know it, that story will go. Yeah. But whether I'm on duty or not, you call Fels and like, hey, I'll be there. I've left my home at 1 a.m. to go and cover fire incident in the market scene. I've left my home at 1 a.m. to go and cover where there was an encounter between the police and suspected armed robbers in Benin. You know the reason. You need to get the story. If the police says we had an encounter with robbers and two were killed and you got that you didn't meet the armed robber, does it make a story? Does it make a story? But when you get that you meet the two robbers dead and maybe one is still alive trying to talk, you quickly trigger your camera to really interview to know what happened. Whatever that suspect say, it's already a big story. One, whether say, yes, he actually participated. And two, he may even say, I'm innocent. So whichever one 
that comes from the mouth of the suspect before he, he gives up is already a story. But when you don't get there on time, and then you are not carrying one side of the story. So to us, we have that passion to still keep the job flowing. So my appeal to journalists who are watching this program is develop a very strong passion, try as much as possible to catch the story when it's very hot. Mm -hmm. Because I know there is this uh, training we had to say it's good for you to catch what we call exclusive stories. Exclusive stories are stories known to only you. Only you yes. Then when you release it, you see your colleagues jumping. Please give me the story. Please give me the tape. Then you'll not be happy to say, yes, I've got the story. And then there are some to call it scoop. Scoop is a story that came into your ear, nobody knew. You are investigating it. By the time you get through with it, you make the story public. So all these are done for the purpose of fashion. I mean, for the purpose of passion. So if you don't have passion, and somebody is telling you there's a story that happened as a story that I mean, I won't go sleep. There's no passion. But when you pursue the story, and then before you do something, when the journalists want to enjoy, it's not when you are doing the story. It's not when you are pursuing the story. Something will come from that story. I'll give you two examples. On Christmas Day of 2014, Christmas Day of 2014, I got a call at 6 a.m. that a woman from Austria was murdered somewhere around Upper Mission Extension. And her name is Rose Eiffel. Just if you go to Google, just Google Rose Eiffel, Austria, you see the story. I was the first journalist in Edo State to get to the scene. Since 15 a.m., I was there. I captured the story, I recorded it, and then I went on air. Moment after that, people all over the world started calling. Why were they calling? Because they needed the story from me. And after that, the children came. And Moment after that, too, the case came up. Somebody that was suspected was arrested. So many issues came. And then the children now needed to do uh, insurance claims over there. And then they need the rushes. They need some of the information. Of course, they contacted me. Do you even know I went to Austria? Mm -hmm. Yes, I went to Austria. I went to Vienna. I went to some of the Salzburg and other areas in Austria. What took me there was to go and bring the story to the family. Because the woman also has a family there, her children, they were all there. And then I went. So that means hard work pays. That's what I'm saying. So if as at that time I got that call, I just said, I bet I don't feel good. I'm going to yes. say myself. You know, that's what Do you understand what I'm saying? So these are little things that come. People watch your story. They want to talk to you. When this um, guy was uh, murdered around the bypass last year, January, uh, Dennis Aboda, Chief Dennis Aboda, from Fuga, I was also the first journalist to get to the scene. I covered it, I reported it, and then people started calling all over the world. But when the family now called me from US to say they needed the tape, I supplied the tape. That is the best way to go. Okay, now, Festa Zaleke, coming back to you now. Yes. How do you feel on the road? Because I let you, I let you ask people, so how do you feel now? Now that yep. you've been caught. Yeah, no. So now that you have been caught on the street. <laughs> So how do you feel? No, well, reporting now, doing your job, how do you feel most times when you have to work? I know you and I have been on the trip, and then somebody said, ah, that's just as I like, and, you know, I don't know. How does it make you feel? I feel happy. I feel for free. But wait, as a crime reporter, do you yes. sometimes uh, feel afraid? Do no, you think you, you're protected? I've never been afraid. Do you know why? Somebody has to do the job. Somebody has to let the world know what's going on. If nobody to report, how would you know that an incident happened somewhere? Mm -hmm. Like I told you, I was somewhere today to report a woman that was murdered and her body mutilated by suspected uh, ritualists. Do you understand? Somebody needs to report it. So I'm not always afraid at all. The reason is, so long as you are doing the right thing, so long as you are doing the right report, you can only get scared if what you are reporting is not genuine. Mm -hmm. If you are not balanced, yes. factual if, you are, if, if your report is not truthful, if you are not investigative enough, you just call it, they call it half truth. Mm -hmm. You take it to an extent, you report. Then you are offending a lot of people. Exactly. But when you report actually, when you report the exact situation, people get to say, well done for that report. So to me, I'm not afraid at all. Do you even know that most times 
I go to petrol stations, people just walk up to me, oh, first one, how are you? you are buying for How much are you buying? They will pay. I go to supermarkets, I want to buy things, people just walk up to me, ah, please, how much is it being? So when you see this, you are always later, and you want to do more. So I want to thank Edo people, and I want to thank everybody, especially all our fans, all those who watch us, but my program on television is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We also have a repeat that on Friday at um, 9 a.m. We will have it on radio Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. I've never missed this program one day. It's still on there. If you go to YouTube, you just Google Fel Salenge, you see all our stories. So I want to assure you to write in the studio that I will not miss any of the audition by grace of God. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the program. And uh, you've spoken quite a lot. But uh, I'm sure you might have just one advice, especially, you know, to media owners too, because we really couldn't get into that. But because uh, sometimes, you know, some of the information uh, journalists are compelled to send forth might not be the actual truth. What do you have to say, wrapping up right now, to media owners? Because again, you're talking about um, having the fact and coming out with the actual story. Just maybe because you were working with a government uh, organization, you really might not have faced some of the challenges that some of these private uh, uh, broadcast owners have to put their staff through, which is, I want you to report the story this way. I want you to report it that way. What do you think about this in Rapino? Well, um, there are two media owners from our investigation. One is government, mm -hmm. federal and state government, and then the other is individuals. Um, it's everywhere, especially in Nigeria. Uh, you call that censorship. You find a situation where uh, the owner or the media organization try to censor your story, especially if one belongs to one political group or the other. Mm -hmm. And then there are stories that are affecting the political group, they try to, to change it. And especially if there are some stories too, could be crime related or fraud related. Yes. And then that affects the friends of the owner of the station. Yes. And then try to prevent the story from going on there. There are ways to this. Why I appeal strongly to um, owners of the various media organizations to allow journalists to perform their duty the way it's supposed to be, so long as the story is balanced. But the advice I usually give to my colleague is this. I will tell them, if you have an exclusive story and station A say you must not air. Release it to station B. Okay. I used to do it. If I get a story and I know that this story is of public interest, and I know that when this story goes, a lot of people will know what is happening, and you want to kill the story, if your station is not taking it, you take it to another station and they will take gladly. So for the stories to naturally die, because there's one that's all, kill that story naturally. Exactly. That story must not go. Okay, if the story is not going on station A, but I can assure you that the story will go on station B. So my advice to colleagues who are watching this program is, if there are stories you need to use, and from your conscience, you know that that story is supposed to go on air, and they are saying you must not use, never mind, relax yourself, because your job matters a lot. Why not release it to other stations to use? And that is it. So lastly, I appeal to, to both governments and individuals who own various media houses across Nigeria, Try as much as possible to allow journalists who are working in your station to do the writing. All right, thank you so much. I'm sure you've heard from Festus Aleke. Thank you very much for coming on the BAT show. Thank you very much. All right, that'll be all for today on the show. And uh, we've had, you know, a professional journalist and the chairman, Nigerian, as Nigerian Union of Journalists, a Doe State Chapter, Festus Aleke, and of course, a crime reporter we all know. Uh, very well. That will be all today and uh, we can have another time. Let's do it again on the program. Yeah.